I'm going to give you my answer to that, all right? And I may grow in this because, you know, I had to get some medicine to come here. If I didn't have medicine, I won't be here. And if I came here without medicine, my ears would have exploded on the plane, right? It's wisdom. For me, here's the way I judged it. I made a commitment to come here. Uh, I'm finding a fight of faith over, over this particular area of my life. I made a commitment to come here. I love you guys. I love these guys. And I want to I wanna do what's right for you. What's right for you is that I do what's necessary to come now. And there, you, sometimes what we do is we try, to, we try to develop faith in the middle of a crisis. Right? We get a crisis and then we start speaking to the mountain. If you develop your faith proactively when the crisis comes, you've got the time. You've got the faith for that crisis. But a lot of times when you're in a crisis mode, you don't have time to develop your faith. So you need someone to come alongside of you, whatever that is, like in medical care, whatever it is. But, you know, man, if I'm still fighting a long-term battle, so I'm not giving up on this. I'm believing that I have word on this. By his stripes I'm healed. I have word on this. God breathed into man into his upper respiratory system. I have word on this that I'm going to be, I'm going to live totally free, totally uh, full of God's breath. I'm going to live in this way. That's the good fight of faith. My, in my opinion, when my, when my fight of faith starts to affect the people around me, I, that's when I want to start to act, ask the Lord for wisdom what I need to do. The other thing is I can't enforce my faith on someone else. So my conviction about something may not be your conviction about that. And for you to try to live my conviction without having the faith. So one person may have the faith about a certain area. They may not even take an aspirin. They might not take anything. And that, that might be where their conviction is, and that's their faith. You try to live that out today, and you're trying to live it out in the flesh, not out of a revelation. You're just trying to do it because they did. So... Todd has a revelation about fasting that I don't walk in, but it's his revelation and it's a truth for him. If I tried to do it, I'd be doing it in the flesh. My blood sugar would drop. I wouldn't be a happy person to be around and it wouldn't be right. So you have to know what your convictions are, what faith you have at the level. This is my opinion now. I'm getting into an area where it's, you have to talk to the Holy Spirit. But this is where I am. I'm not going to force my convictions on someone else. And I'm not going to try to live out somebody else's convictions. I'm, I have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. I have, I have a relationship with my spouse and my children. We know what we agree on. We know what we believe for. And I also know I'm not where I'm going to be, but I'm not where I was either. So I'm going to celebrate the mountains I've conquered already, but I'm going to still keep speaking to the mountains in front of me. That's the way I handle that kind of a thing. I mean, as far as like, like he said, everybody's different. It just it, it depends on, on where I'm at. I've had to obviously have surgery, know my knee, and had to do it. I've had times where I haven't been able to see something go out of my kids. It needs to go, and I'm not opposed to like getting them help if I have to. If I'm not seeing it break through, and, and I'm not their life, I'm not putting their life like there are people that have died because they've said, listen, we're, and, and um, so I'm not. So you got to be very careful on, on your hearing God. We've had people come, and they're on. I remember Dan and I personally, we did another conference in the beginning, and someone came to the conference was on an insulin pump. So they turned it off, and they were there. And then they were passed out in the stall on the ground, throwing up, and then, like, had to call the ambulance and stuff. So it wasn't good. We didn't tell them to do that. I would never tell anybody to go off of medication. Personally, I've never said, listen, you need to take your medic stop, throw your medication away. There are people that have done that. John G. Lake was one of them. But I'm not trying to walk in what he's walked in without the revelation that he had. Okay, so, so I'm not against doctors. I'm not against hospitals. I'm not against medication. I just believe that we take it to Jesus. So before I would pop an Advil, I'd be praying. Before I would take some medicine, I'd be praying, I'd be seeking God on this thing. So before, when, when, if my kids have a headache, immediately we go after that thing and pray for that thing to be gone. Before I'm going to say, hey, take some Advil and, and I'll be back to, I'll be going to a meeting and I'll be back. So that would be weird for me and in our life. And so um, as far as like, if you know you're healed, I've had people on the other side too that have gotten healed from diabetes. They're type, they're type one. 
and insulin dependent on six shots a day and they've gotten healed and they've still used their insulin which would kill them because of the dose they were on but the doctor weaned them down weaned them down weaned them down and they're completely off of it but at the time they didn't know they were healed so they were taking medicine right. that could have killed awesome. them so it's like either way right so i would tell you this too when you're when you're you'll know it you know god God heals you, you'll know it. It'll happen. So you, you, you follow your conviction with God. But it, again, you're not like... I'm not against doctors, okay? So if, if, you, if you are taking medicine and you believe you're being healed, get checked by your doctor, man. Just go get checked. Like if you're, you're taking something and you're taking blood pressure medication, you're taking blood thinner, Coumadin, and you believe that your blood pressure is healed, go to your doctor and have them check it. Have them check. Like, check your blood if you're diabetic and you get prayer. Check your blood. See your blood count. You prick your finger. It, it's something with that. So even when you go to the doctor, you're still seeking God. God's not opposed to it. What you could, the worst thing you could do is just go to the doctor and leave God home when you go there. So when you go to the doctor, get my, go to the doctor to get my kids checked if I have to. Then I'm going there. I'm bringing Jesus with me, dude. There's other kids that are sick there. The nurses are coming to my room. They need to know that Jesus is amazing and how awesome he is. And if I get a word of knowledge or whatever about the nurse, I'm going to pray for them right there in the doctor's office. And then the doctor's checking my kid that's sick, but the doctor gets healed. And you say, well, that's weird. No, that's God. So uh, wherever you are, you manifest him. So no matter what you do, you, you carry him with you. So if you're on medicine, if you have to go to the doctor, bring Jesus to your doctor. Like in any, any, any way. Does that make any sense? Yeah. So I'm not against the doctors, but I'll bring in Jesus if I'm going there. Yeah? Let me just add to that too. We, we all are walking, trying to, we don't just want to walk in healing. We want to walk in divine health. And we all have a personal conviction. I mean, our whole team, there's a bunch of people that have lost a lot of weight. I'm trying to gain some, but they've you know, tried to lose it. But, but I mean, I think that the Holy Spirit will tell you Maybe there's something you shouldn't be eating. Maybe there's something you need to change. We, we live a, we're on the road a lot. We eat out a lot. We have to make the right choices. And we have to make sure we're taking care of our bodies. We got to do those things. And so I think there's even a wisdom in the nutritional end of things, the medicinal end of things, and the supernatural things. I think I see them, to me, I see them as a three-stranded cord of healing. Nutrition and, and, and doctors and, and supernatural healing. I see that working together, we can actually live in a place of divine health. Sometimes we can actually preclude some of the things that are going to come down later in life because we take care of ourselves now. And I want to, I want to, you know, I want to, my whole days as my days are, so I want my strength to be. So even ask the Holy Spirit, what can I do just to change one little thing? And maybe I need to drink more water. Maybe I need to cut out this certain thing. And to walk in divine health, that's not a it's not a legalistic thing. It's just relationship with the Holy Spirit and to, for him to give you wisdom. And these are all things that we're trying to practice uh, together. And these are part of the personal convictions that sometimes we just say, pray for the sick and they'll recover. But Jesus said also, go and supersize yourself no more. You know, go, go, go and sin no more. <laughs> so maybe, you know, stop visiting that drive through a couple times. I'm just saying, all right? I want to tell you, like, uh, are you okay? Yeah, I was going to just add something, but I'll add it after you add yours. <laughs> All right. I, I didn't see. Sorry. So um, with, with me, with that, with, which, what Bob's talking about, with that, it's a, it's a big deal. It's huge. Um, it's really big. I, I've, I've talk, and I've talked to leaders all around the world, and God is provoking a lot of people to changing their eating. I'm serious, man. Like, it's neat. It's not just a good idea. It's yeah. like, it's, it's big. Like, I've talked to leaders that I haven't talked to in a while. Man, God's really got me. What is he saying to you about this? Well, three years ago, God really convicted me about because of our lifestyle, because of what we do. We, we travel, and I remember at the time, Buffalo Wild Wings was, like, our favorite spot, man. But it, there was a picture, I don't know if you remember it, that, that they took where... Mm -hmm. Where I had, I had that, I had like, I, I. He ate 40 wings. ate 40 wings. But what I would do is I would have 40 wings and I would have a load of cheese sticks and I'd have a salad. And then I'd go to bed right afterward. And, and, and so, but it wasn't good. And a diet and so God, Coke. No. God really, con, God really convicted me of, 
of my food. And it was like, you know, your spirit, you're one with me, and your soul, you're one with me, but in your body, you're far away from where you need to be. And I was like immediate, like, I need real grace for this right here, right? Because it's, all, I mean, diets aren't fun. And so I believe it's a revelation that the church can press into. And, and since you mentioned it, kind of, I've never really talked about it, but I just want to for, for a couple minutes, okay? So just bear with me here, just for a couple minutes. I believe that there's a place for us as the body of Christ to actually wrap faith around food. So instead of it being a diet, a diet, because how many people have ever eaten, you're on a diet and you eat healthy and then you have your cheat day? Well, I believe that like there's a place where you don't have to have a cheat day because it's, you're not, you don't need to cheat because it's just the way that, that's right. Does that make sense? Okay. So, so I went and, boy, when you start talking like this, man, as people love their food, dude. So people are like, okay, finished, done. Next question, please. <clears throat> but I honestly believe, so what I did was I went and found this program called First Place for Health. My church actually said that we're going to do this. It's like a biblical eating program. And I looked at this, this biblical eating program, and it was just like all it is is just regular food. It wasn't like supplements or anything like that. And I thought, man, that's awesome. So it's regular eating. Okay, I can do this. I'm going to go and buy myself some meal replacement formula. And then I'm just going to, you know, when I can eat this way, I'm going to, but I'm going to have meal replacement formula. So I'm like, yeah, I'm going to do it. I devise my own plan. I'm doing this thing, right? Yeah, God, I'm going to follow through on this. So we go to our first meeting. I sign this piece of paper that says I have to stick to the program that says that I have to, like, make a covenant with God to be done with sugar for 13 weeks. Well, I'm like, I can do this. Okay, I'm going to do the sugar thing. I'm not going to do sugar. 13 weeks. It's going to be awesome. And so, like, I'm at the meeting. I'm like, man, and I start talking to my buddy, who's one of the guys that's going to be ahead in the program. I said, man, listen to what I'm going to do. Man, I went and bought all these, like, meal replacements and stuff. I have, like, four weeks, a four-week supply of it, you know. So I invested money into this thing. And he goes, oh, you can't do that on the program. I go, what do you mean, dude? Right? So he goes, and we're friends. So we joke around. I go, man, I, you don't, dude, I travel, man. I got the crazy schedule. You, I got to have something so that I can supplement. I got to have something. So he's like, well, you signed that piece of paper, man. You made a covenant. I'm like, so I'm thinking, I was going to be quiet because I did. I signed it. And then I read it. Always read what you signed, right? <laughs> so I read it. And I'm like, you know, I went home and I actually was in tears. In my, because uh, I'm thinking, I had this thing all planned out, and I'm like, and I wasn't like, it didn't hurt me. I'm like, I'm a covenant God, and God's a covenant God. And so I made a covenant with God. So now, since I made this covenant with God, God's gonna help me uphold this thing. So I said, God, I really need your help on this thing. And it was like, I immediately had this, like, wow. So I did this thing for 13 weeks in this program, and I cut out all of my white bread, white flour stuff and brought in whole wheat, whole grain, which is awesome because it's so much better for you. I cut out my sugar, right? I increased my water and I started to exercise. So in 13 weeks, I lost 55 pounds. It was supernatural, man. It was a supernatural weight loss. It was awesome. But I asked God. It was... It, Wisdom. Wisdom. But the, the, the speed of the... I mean, there was times where I'd come in and I lost six pounds in a week. And I ate, I ate more than I, I had ever eaten. And, and that was like my motivational thing. But it was like I was the biggest loser. You know, I mean, we even had it for the, for the program, that, just like that weight loss thing. But anyway, it was kind of cool. But what it did was the 13 weeks were over. I made the covenant for 13 weeks to do that. And then at the end of the 13 weeks, God said, our covenant's not done. And so even though I signed it for 13 weeks, God helped me carry it. And now it's like this is three years later. I've kept it off. And now I travel with my juicer, man. And I have it. I ship it. And so I get all my vegetables. I juice and eat healthy. But I'm telling you that there's great wisdom in eating healthy. But I believe it's God. And he is inspiring the church to actually get her physical body healthy again. Amen. I just want to say, Todd, you're not a big loser. You, God thinks differently. Thank you, man. Thank you. I just want to and I just want to say I still eat Buffalo Wild Wings once in a while. Me too. Me too. I admit it. Yeah. Forget the soda. That's just yeah. not good yeah. for you.
basically, yeah, like, what do you yeah, do? Yeah, well, do I'm not sure meditation? with epilepsy, the medical thing, like, if there's a way to tell it's there. Somebody help me with that. I'm not a medical guy. Like, I don't tell people to stop taking their meds in the faith thing. I don't do that for people. I live a certain way. Like, the way I live, I don't even preach from the pulpit because people respect me, and they'll try to, to do what I did instead of become what I am. Like... Oh, it works for Dan. I'm going to try this. No, you become that. You, you don't do something to prove faith or find faith. You do something because you see. It never works. It never works. So with epilepsy, I don't know. Is there, is there medical people here that can help me with this? Can, can, do they do tests to reveal epilepsy? Or does epilepsy just show up with a seizure unannounced? Or can you tell that a person has the potential for epileptic seizures? Okay. And that's how they diagnose epilepsy. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay. Well, here's, here's, here's what I'm going to answer that. There's a place for you to know that you know that you're healed in your heart. And to, like people with diabetes, is, diabetes is a wretched disease. And it causes a lot of bad symptoms and effects and damage to the body. So people that have t tasted the harm of diabetes... Is it's not fun, and all of a sudden they're prayed for, and their blood looks normal, and they're not taking their insulin, and they're checking their blood, and it's not normal, uh, or it's still normal, it's not abnormal, and all of a sudden it looks like it's still in normal, but it's a little on the high side of normal, and and their minds because they've been bitten by the effects of that, is that they feel like uh, you know what I'm saying? So it's a paradox. It's it's your privilege to believe God. In those cases, I would say as long as you're holding in a good place, you continue to thank God, except for what He did. You're never judged if you take a medicine or something. There's too much condemnation in the body of Christ. You just don't do one or the other. You don't throw away faith. I tell people, if you're trying to find faith, man, just run, get, go, get, call 911. And, and, but don't throw away your growth, your spirituality, and don't throw away faith, and don't go through the thing condemned without Jesus. Do you see what I mean? But at the same time, you have this privilege, like with epilepsy. Uh, if the seizures have been violent and they really hurt you and you have loved ones around you and a spouse that's concerned, there's, there's stuff you can consider and you can schedule an EEG and you can say, I'm just going to go check because I believe Jesus. That is not a lack of faith. You, it's not wrong to go take the picture to show that what was there isn't there. I, I had a person get totally healed from Lyme disease. She just knew she was healed. And she told her husband, we can get pregnant now. We can have our child. And he said, honey, just go get your blood tested. It's a real responsibility to, to conceive a child. And I just want to know in stewardship of just good faith that, that you're totally free in your blood so that we don't ever run a risk putting this into a child. Just, and she said, I don't need a test. I'm totally healed. And she called me and said, my husband's not believing that I'm healed and et cetera. He wants me to get a test. I said, well, honey, love him enough and go get a test because if you're healed, you're healed. You're not threatened by the test. Amen. Just go get a test. It doesn't make you an unbeliever, and it's no slam to your husband. He's actually being responsible and saying, look, if we could check your blood and get my conscience clear, because I'm not going to I'm not going to uh, come together with you in a way that you can get pregnant if I'm not sure, because we're talking about life here, that this isn't in your blood anymore. And I said, so if you're healed, you're healed. Go get the test. So she ran, took the test, and had no trace of Lyme in her blood. And they have a little baby today, and she's pregnant now. So it's just cool. Yeah, she's pregnant, another baby. Yeah, wow. isn't she sweet? She came to a service completely riddled with Lyme disease. And we prayed for her. And they said she would be a quadriplegic in a matter of weeks or so because it was in her neurological system. Not a paraplegic, quadriplegic. They said, you will be useless from the neck down at the rate this thing is going. She was 27 years old, married for three years and wanted to have children and couldn't because of passing the Lyme to the baby. She came to a service. This was all new to her. We surrounded her and prayed for her with great compassion. Not one symptom left her body. She felt exactly the same. And that's where we stumble. And I looked at her, and I know there's a place for her to just feel better and be, but I looked at her and I said, Honey, when you go home tonight, you sit on your bed and you thank Jesus for this gospel. You thank the Father for loving you. You thank God that we prayed the prayer of faith and if you lay hands on the sick, they recover. We're not turning faith into a point in time. It's the position of our heart and we don't know how to let go. So you go home and don't weigh this thing face value. You crawl in your bed and you thank Jesus for loving you. And she said, okay. 
So she got home and she sat on her bed and said, Father, this was amazing tonight. This was new to me. But those people were so for real, so genuine. I felt so loved. And what that man was saying made so much sense to me. It was like, wow. She grew up a missionary's daughter, but in a denomination that didn't believe anything we preached. She said, Lord, I believe I'm going to be okay, and I believe you love me, and I'm just not afraid anymore. And just thank you for tonight. Tonight was special. I'm really happy here. And whatever. crawls in bed. She wakes up in the morning with not one single symptom of Lyme. Yeah. Isn't that fun? Now, I know there's a place where every symptom leaves now, and we go for that every time we pray. But I will not strive. I will not get into works. I'll not try to pray louder or pray better if I don't see them symptoms leave. I will say, don't you take this personal and don't you say, what am I doing wrong and why didn't I get healed? You say, Father, thank you that you love me and thank you that the finished work of Jesus is enough and my eyes are fixed on you. And I'm not a product of this disease. I'm a product of the cross. And I thank you we're winning. We will win. And I'm coming through because you love me. Or you're prayed for and you have all these questions that cut into your identity and now you're striving instead of in rest. You follow me? Be very careful. So all these testimonies come to mind when we're talking about stuff like this and it's just fun. So.